And uh, on, the, on the question of solving little problems, or solving big problems, I'm very pleased to be able to uh, introduce our next speaker, uh, John Mackay from Denature. Um, I'm sure a lot of you will know or have heard of, of John already. Um, I'm not going to spend any time trying to introduce him because he's very capable of doing that for himself. But he's going to talk to us here about some very interesting technology that's being uh, developed at the present time with regards to um, AFP detection. Thank you, John. Kia ora, everyone. So I'm talking about emerging technologies. Um, the nice thing is, for a lot of people doing manuka honey work, this technology has already emerged in terms of the MPI standard uh, and the, um, the DNA test that's required for manuka honey exports. So American fowl brood, um, you know, when we have when we have frames of um, clear brood, then suspect cells can be sort of readily identified and uh, you know potentially roped out. But the issue is, you know, we know disease is being missed, and other diseases can mimic symptoms. So when we get really patchy frames where um, you know PMS is is causing uh, issues, but you start getting matchsticks and going through multiple cells looking for American fowl brood, uh, it becomes very laborious. So what we did is we developed a dual target uh, qPCR test for American fowl brood. That is a dual target DNA test. And why dual target? Uh, one word: chlamydia. And I'm not saying that because I'm from Gisborne. <laughs> <clears throat> Around the world, uh, in fact, it's, it's actually most common. So all chlamydia is diagnosed with a DNA test now. And one of the issues is, even with the current DNA test, PCR is incredibly sensitive, incredibly, incredibly specific. So if the DNA changes slightly or mutates, a PCR test may miss it because it's designed for that very specific DNA sequence. So to get around this, in case a particular DNA sequence in American fowl brood should mutate, we have a second reaction looking for another piece of DNA uh, happening in the same reaction. And we can look at that uh, with what we call different channels. So this is an example here of a qPCR generating what you guys are very familiar with in terms of a, a CQ. And it's basically where we see this fluorescent line uh, taking off or kicking up, if you like, so cycle quantity. So what we have here with the two markers, as I said, happening in the, in the one tube is here's a low CQ, i.e. high level of AFB, and here's a very low level. And so that's the two independent, or what we call AFB duo, happening in the same reaction. And we also have a third one happening, which is a piece of DNA that should amplify in every reaction. So when that happens, we know we've had a good PCR process uh, happen. So looking at comparative test sensitivities, and we're a, we're a company in Gisborne, uh, we tend not to go by what others have done. Um, we, we just get on and, and do our thing. But others are bound by international protocols. And so one of the things that was done was comparing uh, our test here, and this is just increasingly increasing dilution. So this is the low level out here, and looking at with the OIE protocols for AFB. And what it basically showed was that uh, our test on four different types of AFB sample was the most sensitive. So it was more sensitive than the OIE protocols and also more sensitive than another commercial qPCR assay. So the current testing is done by culture. It can be difficult to get spores to germinate. Uh, you've got limited sample type or it's a limited sample type, so typically ropey material and honey, and laborious to get samples. So you're having to dismantle hives, pull out frames to, um, to, to look for uh, ropey material. Or, you know, just pulling off honey supers um, to f get your bee samples. So what we have going on at the moment 
uh, is a current research project uh, to look at testing alternative sampling strategies uh, compared to the gold standard, which is uh, testing nurse bees. And so our thinking is that this will be faster. It won't disrupt the hive. You won't have to open the hive. And uh, it will also allow for larger scale testing because you know, there's only so many bees we can jam into a tube uh, for composite testing. The issue is, um, and you know, thanks for the introduction uh, from Renee, the issue is with the subclinicals. Does a positive lead to a definite clinical infection, which is the time uh, under law the hive must be burnt? So here's an example here. Um, you can also see this on our poster, which is in the, um, uh, in the trade halls, and actually on our stand as well. This is an example here uh, running uh, clinical, from a clinical hive, um, and so this is using our, our sampling, uh, our, our alternative sampling method, um, which I'll, I'll talk on briefly. And this is from a hive that has no clinical signs. So we're still detecting AFB DNA, but um, at, a, at a very low level. And the nice thing with this qPCR method, quantitative PCR, is we can work out the relative levels here. So this is about a 15 CQ difference. So basically from, from 35 minus 20, it's about a 15 CQ difference, which equates to about a 32,000-fold 32 32, difference in AFB spore levels. So mentioning again with uh, you know, having to dismantle a hive to get uh, either brood samples or look for suspect cells, what, we can also, what we're working on is sampling through the entrance of a hive. So that work's ongoing. It, it needs further work. As I said, the bees are the gold standard. The agreement in the um, the agreement between the bees is extremely good. The bees are looking more sensitive uh, in terms of the absolute CQ levels, but it's it's early days. We you know we need to do more research on our alternative sampling method, but it's looking extremely promising. So we have this um, the project we have going on. So this is a project that we've largely funded ourselves with a little bit of. Uh, money from the Eastland Community Trust, uh, for which we thank. So this is looking at the bee testing uh, versus sampling from the baseboard versus our new sampling method through the, the entrance of the swab. So uh, there's a number of beekeepers here who are involved with that, and you know thanks to you guys as well. We're also involved, as Alan said, with the Otago Southland Clean Hive Project, uh, managed by John Scandrett. Uh, and that's showing up results that are um, correlating very closely uh, with our work. We're not the only ones working on this, uh, this qPCR technology. So Plant and Food Research looked at 133 high-risk hives. They identified from clinical inspection 12 early-stage clinical hives, and all those B samples that they took by qPCR showed uh, lower um, AFB CQs, that is, they had higher levels. Um, as you'd expect. So that's work by James Sainsbury and team at Plant and Food. But they had another 12 that had low level DNA detection, but no clinical signs. So the question is, you know, we're wanting to, why our project is ongoing is to follow these hives. And again, sort of showing here the difference between clinically infected and a potential, uh, you know, no clinical signs, but we're still detecting AFB spores. So due to industry demand, this was developed as a, as a kit, um, AFB Duo, um, and is in use in you know, our lab and other New Zealand labs. And that's all. Thanks for listening, folks. <laughs>